In this video, we're going to talk about what the STEAM education conceptual model is. Up until this point, we've been talking about things that have been going on both nationally and globally and the reasons for STEAM education. And now we're going to get down into what this means for your classroom or your particular setting. For the STEAM education conceptual model, I draw on a framework called connected learning. Connected learning as a framework really helps to draw on students' interest. It focuses on equitable participation, which means that it ensures that all students are engaged in the activities. It also is academically oriented, meaning that students are engaged in high-level practices. It focuses on peer network or collaboration, and it thinks about the ways in which we can solve real-world relevant STEAM problems. Connected learning considers students' interests and uses technology to connect youth with their community, mentors, schools, and, home, and homes to practice real-world skills. The reason this framework hasn't really been used in a lot of settings is because connected learning was founded as what do kids do and how do they learn outside of school settings? And so my work has been thinking about how do we take that um, awesome learning opportunity that students often engage in at their own free time and think about ways we can bring that into the classrooms to really engage them in the content and the standards that we're thinking about. So before we begin, I just want to talk a little bit about a classroom in which uh, a teacher was thinking about implementing STEAM and so I was supporting her to do this work. So her problem scenario that she helped to construct was about uh, elephants from a zoo that had, had died and as a result there was a large enclosure open. So the zookeepers actually came to Mrs. Brown's classroom and said, we would love for your students to help us research and fill this spot and what an awesome opportunity for the sixth graders at Glenville View Middle School. And so as a part of their STEAM unit, they actually researched what were some of the um, parameters that they would need to think about for the animals, such as their life cycle, what kind of food would they need, what kind of habitat would they need to have access to, think about a budget, and then also try to market this, right? Because those do need to draw in crowds, and so the students developed marketing plans and really thought about all of the components that would need to go into bringing an animal into the zoo. As a result, they created an interactive presentation to convince the zookeepers of this choice. This was a really interesting project and you can imagine how excited the students were that they, re that they actually got to help solve this problem. As an aside, the animal that was chosen were, were two anteaters that moved into the, to the Greenville Zoo, which the students really took a lot of ownership and pride in, in helping to do that. When talking to Mrs. Brown about this work, she was really excited about the ways in which STEAM felt natural to her students. And she said, for them, the students, this is what they normally do. They use technology, they talk to other people about it, form ideas and create. And so for her, she didn't have to convince them of this method. But for her teaching style, it was a shift. She had used hands-on activities previously, but STEAM teaching also uses a variety of different strategies. So the students are using different disciplines while solving the problem. I was so happy to hear of the success of Mrs. Brown's classroom and the fact that she was enjoying teaching STEAM and of course that her students were also learning in this format. And so when we think about STEAM education, we really consider the ways in which there are two domains that structure this work, the instructional content and the learning context. So the instructional content really is the design work behind it. So that would be the curriculum, the lesson plans, the unit plans, the assessments, and then the learning context really is what happens in that classroom environment. What are the kids doing? Are they um, actively solving problems? Are they collaborating? Are they thinking critically? And so we're going to tease apart those two, two domains next. And so as I mentioned, we had developed this conceptual model over years of research and looking in classrooms. And so this figure just kind of uh, puts to life what that is. And so in the learning context, this really um, broadly describes both the assessment alignment and ensures that all students are engaged in this work by focusing on strategies that ensure this, this type of work is engaging to those students that sometimes are left behind. 
And so we're going to look at a bit um, in terms of the problem solving skills and discipline integration a bit later, but talk quite a bit about the classroom environment. So we have six different types of strategies that make up the STEAM conceptual model. And those are problem-based, authentic tasks, multiple methods, student choice, technology integration, and teacher facilitation. We're going to talk about those uh, individually next. And so, as I mentioned, what makes STEAM teaching different? Perhaps you already do things that are problem-based. Perhaps you have incorporate choice in terms of allowing students to choose groups of the types of assessments. I'm hoping that you integrate a fair bit of technology already. And perhaps you already use teacher facilitation. So what makes STEAM teaching different? It's the way this is packaged all together in that it draws on all six of these types of strategies. Problem-based learning, again, is something you've probably heard of and hopefully practiced before. Problem-based learning really helps to create the context for learning in that it pulls on multiple lines of inquiry. What do I mean by that? It means that there is more than one way to solve a problem. And so problem-based learning is not a challenge such as uh, build a roller coaster or create a model. Instead, it looks at a problem that needs to be solved that has more than one answer. So if we think back to that zoo problem that I just presented, there could have been a whole variety of animals that ended up in that enclosure, or perhaps no animal at all. In fact, some of the students actually proposed that they not fill the enclosure because they felt like zoos were unethical. That is definitely a possibility and a real world implication of some of the ethical concerns of zoos. And so you can see how with a problem-based instruction, it creates a real world situation for the students to participate in. It also creates a setting for process skills. So thinking about creativity, collaboration, analyzing and modeling, that's what we're hoping comes out of um, when you create a scenario that's problem-based. Authentic tasks are really important to STEAM education. You can have an awesome problem-based instruction scenario, but if what you're asking the students to do are not authentic, it doesn't feel like it is a real-world activity to them. Instead, it feels like school again, which often causes them to disengage. So how do we ensure that the tasks are authentic? I often ask myself, is this something that would really be done to solve a problem? So in the zoo example, would zookeepers uh, want to survey the public to find out uh, animals that they were interested in? Probably. So that would be a great authentic task. Another way is to look at some current issues that are happening. Is there something locally that's going on with, this, with the school? And an awesome STEAM uh, problem is often something related to school food or cafeteria or something around recycling and, and setting up recycling centers at the school. Is there something going on in the community, a situation in the city, such as a local park that's being proposed or a community center, or perhaps something going on environmentally, such as lead in the water or other issues that students could engage in? Is there something timely going on? I remember when the Ebola crisis was going on during the Olympics, that was a great timely STEAM problem for students to think about. And ultimately, all of these sorts of things should tap students' interest. So if you're curious about what students are interested in, just ask them. I'm sure they'll tell you. It is also inquiry rich. So STEAM education really promotes that scientific process in that it provides multiple solutions. One way you can check to see if your STEAM scenario is inquiry rich is that are the products at the end all going to look different? For example, perhaps you're having your students create um, a marketing plan for the zoo and so that is one example where none of the marketing plans would really look the same. They could all look very different. But say, for example, you were asking them to design a cell model based on um, a particular set of components. They probably would all look very similar. So that gives you a good idea of what um, inquiry rich is. It also creates a space for different knowledge types. When we think about engaging all learners and ensuring equitable participation, allowing for multiple types of ideas and knowledges to flourish is really important. And inquiry-rich pathways definitely help to promote that. Again, this isn't a challenge that students solve, but, and so there isn't one correct answer, but many ways to answer the problem. 
student choice is often a STEAM strategy that teachers really get excited about. And when students have choice, they feel more ownership over the tasks, which increases engagement. It also allows students to demonstrate their strengths, engaging different ability types. Teachers will often come to us and talk about the ways in which students that they didn't realize had such strengths, such as in terms of videoing or editing or music, are now engaged in their classroom because they're able to see their strengths in different ways. And of course, this provides and encourages multiple ways to solve a problem when you give students choice in how they want to see their um, assessment and knowledge being um, produced. Technology integration is something we're really gonna talk a lot about in the second course, if you are going to take that course with me. And this really is to enhance student learning and engages students. It focuses on 21st century skills because we really think about technology integration as a way for students to produce, right? Those creative technologies such as um, podcasting and video creation. And so this is when we think about students are placed at the center of the, of the learning and not the technology. And so while using your smart board or displaying information or having students research is a great tool, what we're really looking is to move that needle to where students are actually learning more because of the technology. And of course, we think about this transdisciplinary approach that starts with a problem and then gets at the content. And so while the acronym for STEAM is science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, really what we want to do is come up with an authentic problem and integrate the disciplines that make the most sense to solve the problem. And so you might not have all of the components to solve the problem. For example, not all real world problems need to use science. If you're doing something related to history or something um, that is focused on civics, you might not need science to solve the problem. And so we're not looking to check off each of the content areas, but to authentically integrate according to what the problem needs. One of the trickiest components of STEAM education is teacher facilitation. But it's also the most important because it really allows teachers to see what students are capable of. If you are facilitating your classroom instead of directing it, it will provide you for opportunities for formative assessment and you can really see where students are getting stuck along the STEAM process. We talk a lot about this in the last class in terms of STEAM assessment and developing smart formative assessments for your students. It also provides an opportunity for an individual feedback which students really appreciate and it allows the students to take those multiple pathways. If you're not directing all the learning, the students certainly will, and you can kind of see where they, their minds are taking you along this pathway. But teacher facilitation is not easy, and so I um, spend a lot of time with thinking about teacher facilitation in the second and the third courses so we can really support you in this work. Authentic summative assessment is probably my favorite thing about STEAM education because this is really where students shine. Authentic summative assessment is untraditional in that you might be asking students to create a podcast, a movie, a commercial, a PSA, uh, an infogram. They might be doing some robotics uh, coding and creating some pretty advanced models, but it's all related to the problem. And so what makes sense for an authentic summative assessment really depends on the type of problem that you create for your students. Hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about the STEAM conceptual model. Thank you.